I love celebrating LGBT cinema and highlighting films that you might not have seen due to the movie industry pushing blockbuster movies and movies with heterosexual leads. A number of LGBT-led projects and projects with LGBT storylines were released in July across various streaming services. In the comment section, let me know which shows you will watch, which shows you learned about for the first time, and if you watched one of the shows, if you enjoyed it or not. And a big thank you to all of the new members who joined my channel. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Now, stay tuned. Boys on Film 22 is an anthology of award-winning short indie films by directors from around the world. The first anthology came out in 2009. The 22nd features eight shorts. Ben Aldridge from Pennyworth, who came out in 2020 as a member of the LGBT community, appears in Thrive. Thrive won nine awards, including Best International Narrative Short Film and Outstanding International Narrative Short at Outfest Film Festival. The short, first position, follows an aspiring dancer, Zachary, who is fighting to keep his dream alive after falling ill in 1980s San Francisco. Other notable actors include Samuel Barnett from Penny Dreadful, who is openly gay, Samuel Lennon from Emmerdale, and Pierre Emu from gay horror film Knife and Heart, which was selected for the highest prize at the Cannes Film Festival. If you enjoy supporting indie films with gay leads, then you might enjoy Boys on Film 22 on Amazon Prime. Baloney, a documentary film, follows San Francisco's all-male and gay burlesque show of the same name for over 18 months. Through a mix of interviews, rehearsal footage, and performances, the documentary captures the group's mission of sex positivity and, from the performers, the challenges of sex industry work, trauma, coming out, dating, and masculinity. San Francisco in general is a very sex positive city. It was the birthplace of the hippie movement. You are legally allowed to walk around nude in San Francisco. So it's rather illuminating that the documentary also highlights how kink can be silenced as well as how gender non-conforming people can be silenced as well. It also examines what real failure in life is, which is not doing the thing you know you need to do, even if that thing is to be an artist. If you enjoy gay contemporary documentaries, you might enjoy Baloney, which is available on Amazon Prime. Legacies is a fantasy drama produced by Warner Brothers for The CW. The show was a spinoff for The Originals, which was a spinoff of The Vampire Diaries. Legacies follows Hope, a half-witch, werewolf, and vampire who is attending a school for young adults with supernatural abilities needing to learn how to control their abilities. On the new season of the show, there is a gay romance between Ben and Jed. Ben is a demigod and is gay. Jed is a werewolf and is bisexual. Ben, who is played by Zane Phillips, recently appeared in the movie Fire Island. He's an out gay actor. Other LGBT characters on the show include Hope, who is bisexual, Josie, who is pansexual, Finch, who is a lesbian, Lizzie, who identifies as queer, Jade, who is bisexual, Penelope, who is also bisexual, and Maya, who is a lesbian. If you enjoy fantasy dramas, then you might enjoy Legacies, which airs on CW and previous seasons are on Netflix. Mascarpone, a movie out of Rome, follows a 30-year-old gay man, Antonio, who depends on his husband economically. He gave up his independence and career for the relationship. The couple have been together for over a decade, and unforeseen event forces 
Antonio to leave the comforts of his life into the chaotic world of uncertainty. There are some twists and turns along the way. I think the writer's goal is to force us to think about our own choices. Antonio is forced to evaluate his decision to be dependent upon his husband versus choosing his career. The Italian title is Masculine Singolare, which I think means masculine singer. I mean singular. I did not translate Mascarpone from the Italian title. This is the title in North America. The dramatic romance was shot in Rome in three weeks from January 18th to February 8th, 2020, two weeks away from the start of the coronavirus pandemic. If you like dramatic romances, then you will enjoy Mascarpone. The film is available to stream on Apple TV, Roku, Voodoo, and Amazon Prime. Anything's Possible is a teen romance centering around transgender teen Kelsa. She has recently come out as trans and returns to the school she attended pre-transition. She develops a crush on a classmate. The two have to navigate race, religion, and the pressures of classmates and friends. But what I love most about the story is that it centers a young black trans woman in a rom-com. A generation of young trans women will grow up seeing themselves in a rom-com. Imagine the impact it will have on their lives. Eva Rain, who plays the main character, is trans in real life as well. Overall, the film feels more like Love, Simon than Euphoria. It lacks edge, but it doesn't need edginess. It feels very after-school special meets Old Navy commercial. And I kind of like it. Anything's Possible is Billy Porter's directorial debut and is produced by Amazon Studios. El Uego de las Llaves, an Amazon original dramedy, follows four couples in stable relationships who decide to become swingers. They exchange spouses to spice up their love lives. There are a gay storylines and a bisexual storyline. Valentin, played by Argentine actor Horacio Panchero, I mean Pancheri, which I believe is Italian, discovers that he's attracted to men, leading to a number of romantic partners. The scenes between him and a gay couple are hilarious and steamy. Due to its popularity, Amazon greenlit seasons two and three at the same time. Season one premiered in 2019. Season two premiered last year. Therefore, season three should premiere either in August or September of this year. And music fans will appreciate that Alejandro Guzman and Laura Leone of Dos Mujeres Un Camino are on the show. Overall, the characters are well developed, as is the storyline. However, the editing needs work. The show has a 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.6 .6 out of 10 rating on IMDb. If you enjoy Mexican dramedies, then you might enjoy El Hueco de las Llaves on Amazon Prime. One of my favorite scenes is between Valentin and a man he met at a gay club, but they lie about it. The other character, his wife is played by Paulette Hernandez. Paulette's character in this show is practically the same character from another show titled Cuna de Lobos. Cuna de Lobos, or Cradle of Wolves, is a Mexican telenovela. It is a reboot based off of a telenovela from the 80s. The series follows Catalina Creel, the matriarch of the Larios family who owns one of the most successful jewelry companies in Mexico. An unexpected life event changes the trajectory of everyone's lives and Catalina's two sons are given an ultimatum to inherit the family's wealth. There is a bisexual storyline and a lesbian storyline. Unfortunately, the bisexual storyline is outdated and one-dimensional. The storyline feels like it was written in the 90s because it doesn't have the nuances that it should. The show is very soapy. Catalina is a stereotypical villain who wants to maintain her wealth and will do anything to protect it. Everyone is her pawn in this game. If you enjoy telenovelas, you might enjoy Cuna de Lobos, which is available on Amazon Prime.
Killing Eve is one of the top 10 LGBT shows of all time. Killing Eve is a British thriller produced in the United Kingdom for BBC America and BBC Three. The series follows Eve, played by the incredible Sandra Oh, an intelligence investigator hell-bent on capturing lady assassin Villanelle, played by Jodie Palmer. The two develop a mutual obsession. What I love most about the show is the decisions that the writers make for Eve. She doesn't fall into the category of damsel in distress. And she almost becomes Villanelle in a sense that she uses people to her own benefit. Each season, the lead writers were different women. I actually want to see more shows like Killing Eve on TV. Season one was electric, but season two blew me away. I rewatch episodes constantly. Currently, I'm rewatching season three. Unfortunately, season four, the current season, is the final season. You can watch Killing Eve on Hulu or Amazon Plus. Beauty, written by Lena Waithe, is about a young singer who struggles to maintain her identity after signing with the label in the 80s. Beauty's voice is so powerful that her mother is threatened by it and her father wants to exploit it. Niecy Nash plays her mother, Giancarlo Esposito plays her father, and Sharon Stone plays the company exec who signs her. It feels like an unauthorized biography about Whitney Houston and her girlfriend, Robin Crawford. Overall, the cinematography is gorgeous. The frames, the lighting, the set, the wardrobe, all beautiful. Some of the direction might seem muted. We have a story about a lesbian who isn't written in a traditional way. But if you peel back the layers and look deeper, what happens on screen is magical. Twitter exploded after the movie was released. A significant amount of people were upset that we never see the singer singing. I think you can use your imagination. I actually am not a huge fan of musicals, and often songs are used as filler. If you enjoy art house films that value cinematography and style, then you might enjoy Beauty. Beauty is available on Netflix. The film being about Whitney is not confirmed. However, in the gay universe of divas, Whitney is the queen. Now switching from divas to devos, George Michael is my favorite devo. Freedom Uncut is a documentary that follows George through the release of his debut album, through the release of his album, Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1. George was involved in the project until his death. The film features footage and photos from Michael's archive, as well as never before seen footage from the Freedom 90 music video. The documentary includes interviews with Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Mark Ronson, Mary J. Blige, Tony Bennett, and the Naomi Campbell. When I think of George's music videos, I think of Naomi Campbell's silhouette in the Freedom music video and the Mugler moments in Too Funky. This was the first time I saw the iconic robot suit. Fun fact, George Michael inspired Carpool Karaoke with James Corden. I'm a huge George Michael fan. One of my favorite songs of his is Flawless, Go to the City. A group called The Ones originally produced the song and later on, George laid his lyrics over their beat. It was a beautiful marriage. My second favorite George song is Cowboys and Angels. In the comment section, let me know what's your favorite George Michael song. The documentary was released this year during Pride Month. If you're a fan of documentaries on musicians, or if you are a George Michael fan, you might enjoy Freedom Uncut, which is available on HBO Max. Cow of Fire is a dramatic musical short that follows Desmond, a teen, summoned to court to serve as a witness in a case against his older Portuguese lover, Joe. The film is about having a voice in a society perpetuated by stigmas. The director forces the audience to evaluate how the court of public opinion quickly condemns people using age difference between the couple. Discrimination and homophobia are examined here. The film is the director's graduation film for his master's in filmmaking from the London Film School. If you enjoy musicals, then you might enjoy Cow of Fire, which is available on Gay Binge TV.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writervicky Yates for more about my art and literary projects. And in the comment section, let me know which shows you plan to watch, which shows you learned about for the first time, and if you watched one of the shows, if you enjoyed it or not. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and become a member if you can. Like and share this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos. Mwah.